anti-Newton ring glass doesn't exist. Contrary to what many online photography storefronts want you to believe, there isn't a special purpose, magical glass, that is specifically designed to reduce Newton rings. This is the first video in a series of videos I plan on making that will be going over various film scanning topics in depth. So make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss those. Also follow me on Instagram if you want to see my cool photos. So what are Newton rings anyway? Well, you probably already know since you're watching this video, but I still need to quickly go over it just for completeness. Newton rings are a strange phenomena that occurs when you have two usually glossy surfaces slightly touching each other, which creates sort of an interference pattern that looks like repeating rings, or kind of like an oil slick. But all we care about is that these things can ruin our scans. Newton rings occur most often when using flatbed scanners, but can also occur on dedicated scanners or even sometimes when scanning with a camera setup. For this video, I'll be focusing on flatbeds because that's what I have. Like I said in the beginning, there's no such thing as anti-Newton ring glass. But there is glass that helps stop Newton rings from forming. This glass is not specially made anti-Newton ring glass, that's just a marketing gimmick name created by people who are trying to make a quick buck off photographers like you and me. Just look at these prices. $100, $250, $1,700 for an 8x10 film holder with a piece of glass in it? What is going on? And according to the comments, these special boy holders don't even work. Let's not forget the flatbed film holder inserts. Better Scanning is a site that seemingly still sells this stuff. At least these ones are somewhat reasonably priced, I guess. Still, 30 bucks for a single piece of glass? I've heard their film holders are pretty good, but I've also heard they don't even operate anymore. I've actually tried buying a piece of glass from them, and I never got it. A while ago, there was also Scantech. Their price was $35 for two 35mm A&R glass inserts. Wow. And $90 for an 8x11 piece of glass? Oh my god! There was also Focal Point Incorporated who sold A&R glass, but I can't figure out what their prices were since their website is like, totally busted. It's so strange all of these websites have a lot in common. They are all specifically marketing towards flatbed scanner users, and none of them have like a legit storefront. They all require filling out some form and paying with PayPal. Like, what is going on here? Well, like I said, these are just people who realized they could mark up 100x the price of glass just by cutting it to a specific size and calling it anti-Newton ring. ring. But people did buy this stuff, and it does help get rid of Newton rings. So what is this magical glass? Long story short, it's just off-the-shelf acid-etched glass. But I did a ton of research into the specifics of this glass, the various different types of etched glass, and where you can get it for insanely cheap and how to properly use it, which I will now explain. Acid-etched glass is glass that has been etched with acid thus creating a finely textured surface on the glass that is matte and diffuses light instead of reflecting it. This kind of glass is also called anti-glare or non-glare glass, not to be confused with anti-reflective glass, though some manufacturers conflate those two terms, or even use the term reflection control to mean anti-glare, which is the case for me. The glass I personally use is TrueView brand reflection control glass. But there are tons of other companies that make acid or chemically etched diffused glass that would or should be more or less the same thing. I chose TrueView Reflection Control Glass because I was able to find the spec sheets that specifically said it was chemically etched. Be careful though, because there is also glass that is optically coated, which is not the same thing and will not eliminate Newton rings. These optical coatings have no texture and are kind of like the coatings on camera lenses. If you've done any bit of research into this glass yourself, I'm sure you'll find some people saying to use TrueView Museum Glass. This glass might work, but I don't know and I haven't tried it personally. But I have found a very in-depth comparison of various anti-reflection glasses. This page shows TrueView Museum Glass and shows its optical coating has almost a wavy texture to it. Like I said, it may work, but the reality is any glass may help to control Newton rings. It's theorized that Newton rings are really caused because of tiny amounts of trapped air between two surfaces. So then squishing your film between two sheets of any glass should technically minimize Newton rings. 
Speaking of which, you may have seen people saying to use anti-glare or diffused acrylic slash plexiglass, and yes, these will work, but I would recommend against it, the main reason being acrylic scratches ridiculously easy, just even the action of sliding your dusty negatives across the acrylic is going to scratch it. And those scratches might be noticeable on the scan, maybe? Another reason is that acrylic isn't as rigid or heavy as real glass, and again, a big part of removing Newton rings in general is the smooshing effect the glass has on the film. The last technical aspect to anti-glare glass I'd like to point out is the grain or color shift it imposes on the scan. Here I can demonstrate the slight color shift on this image. This line here is actually the edge of the etched glass, and everything above it is under the glass. Everything below it is not you can clearly see a slight change in color, or maybe it's just the change in brightness since scanning through extra glass will reduce light transmission ever so slightly. When it comes to grain, at least on my low tier scanner, it isn't noticeable. Technically, yes, using etched glass could impose extra grain on your scan, but only if your scanning technique has the ability to resolve that fine detail in the first place and has the depth of field to capture it in focus with the rest of the image on the film. My scanner isn't capable of resolving details that fine to begin with, but I suppose if your scanner is perfectly in focus and has a focal depth thick enough to capture the negative and the surface of the glass, then you might get some extra grain, maybe? I've also tested scanning with a camera using etched glass and without, and I can't see any noticeable extra grain compared to scanning the same image without glass. In reality, as long as you aren't scanning or taking the image through the etched glass, I think the possibility of extra grain or blur is basically non-existent. My etched glass just kind of blurs the image. This is an example test where I scan the negative sandwiched between two pieces of etched glass. Looks pretty horrid, huh? So in this configuration, the lower etched surface is the most in focus part of the image, and the negative is too high up to be in focus at all. And you can see it's kind of like flaky, almost like you're looking through frosted glass. Hmm. But if you have grainier glass, maybe everything I just said is wrong? Because here's something you might find interesting. Non-glare glass isn't all created equally. The amount of diffusion on the glass actually has a measurement called gloss units, which measures the specular glossiness of the surface. These gloss units are measured in degrees, and sadly, I have yet to find easy-to-source anti-glare glass that publicly states its gloss units. According to this chart I found, 60 degrees of gloss is the highest level of etching, and in theory this value would likely give you more grain in your scan. Conversely, etched glass that is closer to 100 or even higher gloss would probably eliminate Newton rings while maybe having less grain addition? Or maybe it would be more, because it's more fine of a grain. I don't know. This is all theoretical, because I have no way of testing other glosses of glass, it's just something to think about. Not that you'll be able to find a source of glass with different gloss units to begin with. Which leads me to my next topic. Where do you buy this stuff anyway? And how much does it cost? Well, it's stupidly cheap. Like, this is the part of the video that's going to make the people dropping 30 plus dollars on a single a &R insert fuming. And the people who spent hundreds for a single sheet of 8x10 glass? Well, I'm pretty sure right now they're currently going through all of my videos and rating them one star. I purchased online four pieces of TrueView reflection control glass. Two pieces that were 35mm wide, one that's 61mm wide, which is about how big a 120 film is, and the fourth piece was 6x9 inches. And I got all of this, including shipping and sales tax, for under $17. And you could probably get it even cheaper. Here's how! Option 1. This is your best bet and likely the cheapest. Go find a local business that does picture framing. Either go in person or call them on the phone and explain to them that you need glass that is acid or chemically etched. Something like TrueView Reflection Control Glass. There's also generic no-name brands that are pretty similar and probably way cheaper too. Just get whatever they have in stock. As long as one side of the glass is noticeably matte, then it will probably work to eliminate Newton rings. You can get them to cut the glass to size for you, and I'll give you the measurements that you need in a moment. Or you could just buy a big sheet of glass and cut it yourself, which is pretty simple to do. The second option, the lazy option, which is what I did, is to find a picture framer online, for which I used Etsy. I ordered from a seller that was located in the same state as me, so shipping was super fast. 
Also, the seller was specifically advertising TrueView Reflection Control Glass, which I had the spec sheet for, so I knew it was certainly chemically etched glass. I selected the 9 by 11 inch piece of glass and gave some specific instructions. This is exactly what I wrote and will help you get what you want as well. Can I please get a 9 inch by 11 inch piece of True View Reflection Control Glass cut into four pieces? Two pieces would be 1.375 inches by 9 inches. The third would be 2.4 inches by 9 inches. Those widths in millimeter would be 35, 35, and 61.5 if possible. The fourth would be whatever's left over. Let me tell you, getting all of that info into 256 characters that Etsy allows you was an ordeal of its own. Once I received the glass, which was shipped very securely by the way, I measured it and it was almost exactly the size I needed. The 35mm ones were 35.5, and half a millimeter is well within the margin of error, especially since I assume most picture framers are using fractional inches when they cut the glass. If you do want to get really super specific, you could try and cut the glass yourself. The measurements would be 35 millimeters, of course, for 35 millimeter film, and for 120 film, it would be 61.8 millimeters. But yeah, that's all I did. I just got it from Etsy and it's perfectly good. Etsy is a great place for this because there's tons of people selling custom glass cutting. Try and find someone locally to you ideally. Like I said before, I was able to get every piece of glass I would ever need for a flatbed for about 17 bucks. Really puts into perspective the highway robbery that these anti-Newton ring glass people were getting away with for so many years just because they are advertising it to photographers. Once you've acquired your cool glass, you gotta actually know how to use it. In an ideal world, you would simply be using this glass to control the curl of the film. And all film, no matter how flat it is, is gonna have a tiny bit of curl to it in one direction or another. This is the case for flatbeds or camera scanning. Initially when I got my glass I decided to modify the flimsy Epson film holders that came with my scanner. If you have one of the higher end Epson scanners they either come with or you can get film holders that already have some form of etched glass or probably acrylic pre-installed in them. 9 inches long is just about the right length for these holders but the widths I got at 35.5 meant I had to do some manual hand fitting and by hand fitting I mean I used the piece of glass itself to scrape away at the plastic lip on each edge just enough so that the glass would eventually snugly fit along the entire length of the holder. These film holders are polystyrene so they're pretty soft and easy to work with but it sure does make quite the mess. Make sure you wear gloves if you do this because, let me tell you, the glass is sharp. I had to do this for both sides, making sure that having both pieces of glass in at the same time didn't cause any issues like bending the holder or something like that. Depending on your setup, once you have the glass and a holder that actually fits together, you should be good to go. But in my case, things weren't as simple. After doing some tests, I discovered that my specific flatbed scanner was far sharper when scanning the film directly on the scanner's glass bed. So I pitched the factory film holders and tried to design my own film holding jig, another massive ordeal which as I'm writing this I'm still not finished with. I'll talk more about this in future videos where I go over everything you'll ever need to know about flatbed scanning. I'm going to explain exactly how I use the glass in my setup because it will cover the most broad range of situations. So because I get the best results when scanning directly on the glass, I have to use the sandwich technique. That would be putting the scanner's glass bed at the bottom, then the film, then my etched glass on top of it. The important thing is the orientation of the etched glass and the film. Remember when I said at the beginning of the video that Newton rings most commonly occurred between two glossy surfaces? Well the best way to get around that is by trying to have no glossy surfaces touching each other. Pick up a piece of film and look at it. One side of the film is a glossy protective coating and the other side is called the emulsion. The emulsion layer usually is much less glossy than the other side, but sometimes it's hard to tell. The best way to tell is by reading. Just hold the film up to the light and pretty much all film has some kind of, you know, text markings along the edges. It'll say Kodak or something. If the words are backwards then you're looking at the side that has the emulsion on it. And that's the side that should be placed facing down on your scanner bed. This also means you need to flip the images horizontally in post, but that isn't a big deal. So now I have the less glossy emulsion layer touching the glossy glass of the scanner bed. Now you gotta figure out which side of your etched glass is actually etched. 
This can be kind of hard at a glance, but there's a trick to it. Hold your glass so you can see a light or something reflecting in it. If the reflection is sharp, then that's the side that isn't etched. Now look how it looks on the etched side. You can't really see the reflection at all. Just place this etched side of the glass so it's sitting on top of the glossy side of the film. And you should hopefully have no Newton rings when you scan. I say hopefully because this isn't a perfect solution 100% of the time. With black and white film, the emulsion layer is almost completely matte. I've never gotten any Newton rings when using this method. Color film, on the other hand, is a completely different monster. The few rolls of color film that I've scanned, I've noticed that the emulsion side is still quite glossy. Probably not as glossy as the opposite side, but still enough that I do occasionally get Newton rings. When that happens, it's usually because the film's curl is physically lifting the etched glass up ever so slightly. Even though it's glass, it still isn't always heavy enough to flatten the film. What I do to fix this is I lift the glass, move the negative around a little bit to maybe put it in a different position, and then place the glass on it again and put a little bit of force down on top of it. Sometimes I'll even put stuff on top of the glass that will then rest on the scanner's lid, thus pushing down on the glass completely, and this usually gets rid of any Newton rings. I would also try to clean off all the surfaces since a big piece of dirt or something might be the cause of trapped air. Remember though, Newton rings can occur on both sides of the film, not just the side touching the scanner bed. If you're using a film holder that lifts the film above the scanner bed, or are scanning with a camera, then you should be good to go just by placing the etch side of the glass on either side of the film, and it shouldn't matter as much. To quickly recap my setup, I've got the glass scanner bed, the emulsion layer of the film touching the bed, then the etched part of my glass on top of my film. If I still get rings, I remount and apply more downward pressure to the glass, and I keep everything clean with a fresh microfiber cloth. Seriously, microfiber gets dirty and it starts depositing dirt on a surface instead of wiping it off. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video explains everything you'll ever need to know about this mythical type of glass, and why it really isn't that special at all. I have a lot more photography focused videos coming up, and a lot more videos about scanning, so please subscribe if this helped you out. And hopefully you too can get some glass that isn't anti-Newton ring glass that doesn't cost a zillion dollars.